When you open Chartmaker Clinical, the screen is designed to look like a bound book. The screen is split into two sections with binder rings in the middle. You also have tabs on the right hand side that represent different sections of the book. The left side of Chartmaker Clinical allows you to find a specific patient, and when a patient chart is open, the patient's face sheet, while the right side will display the to-do list, the chart note, or other areas of the clinical application, like the organizer. This video will walk you through the basic navigation of these areas. Specifically, the video will cover navigating the patient list, the to-do list, the toolbar, the face sheet, the chart note, the organizer, the ID tab, the history tab, the note tab, the flow sheet tab, and the flex form tab. At the conclusion of this video, a basic navigation quiz will appear allowing you to measure your understanding of the video. We ask that all clients that are new to the Chartmaker Medical Suite to please have all of your office staff that will be utilizing the clinical application take the time to complete this quiz and send us the results. Further details on how to send those results are at the end of the video. The left side of the screen allows you to locate and access patient charts by searching the patient list, or you can view and access patients via the appointment list for today, tomorrow, or yesterday. The following sections will walk you through locating and accessing a patient by searching the patient list, as well as how to utilize the appointment list to locate and access patients. Prior to searching for a patient, you have the ability to select whether or not you would like to view inactive patients in your search. To include inactive patients in your search, click the View menu and then click the Inactive Patients option. Once the Inactive Patient Viewing option is configured as desired, you can click into the Patient List search field and type the letters of the patient's last name as well as their first name if needed and the system will return only those patients that meet those results. Whenever an inactive patient is listed in a search result, that patient will have inactive in parentheses beside their name. You can also further refine the search by modifying the search column and search type fields at the bottom of the patient list. Once the correct patient is located, they can be accessed by double-clicking the proper patient or by highlighting that patient and then clicking the open button below. You can also locate patients by viewing the appointment list for a specific provider. This information comes from the Practice Manager application and can be viewed for today, tomorrow, or yesterday. The appointment list will display patient name, chart number, appointment reason, and the appointment date and time. Any appointment scheduled after 12 p.m. will be shown in military time. If a patient has been checked in via the Practice Manager application, the patient will be shown as checked in and their location will be displayed below the appointment date and time. And if a patient has an asterisk in front of their name, this indicates a chart has not yet been started for this patient. Once the patient has been located, you can either double click the patient's name or you can highlight that patient and then click the open button at the bottom of the patient list. When you return to the patient list, the list will display whichever option was displayed previously so if you are viewing the appointment list for yesterday, the next time you log into clinical, yesterday's appointment list will be the defaulted list. The to-do list is located on the right hand side of the screen and can be thought of as a task list that is specific to each user. The to-do list displays unrecorded notes, recalls, and inter-program email that you need to address. These items can be further filtered by clicking the Charts, Recall, Lab, and Messages, Tasks tabs. By clicking the Charts tab, the to-do list will display patient chart notes and scan documents. The Recall tab will list any patient notes with recalls. The Lab tab will display any patient labs and the Messages Tasks tab will display any messages or tasks 
that were assigned to the specific user. The to-do list toolbar allows you to easily perform functions such as creating a new message, deleting a selected item, viewing a selected item, refreshing the to-do list, as well as allowing you to easily modify the priority of a to-do list item. Likewise, you can filter data within the to-do list by clicking the column headings to sort on that item, or click the corresponding drop-down list in the column heading to select specific data for that column item. For example, if you wanted to view messages only, you could click the type column drop-down list and select message. Also, if you highlight a message or task, you will see a preview of that message or task in the bottom of the screen. And if you check the Show Completed Items option, completed tasks for the user will be included in the to-do list. To open an item in the to-do list, highlight that item and then click the View button or simply double-click the item you wish to view. If you have the proper privilege permissions, you can also view another user's to-do list. To view another user's to-do list, click the To-Do menu and then select Change user for list. In the Select To Do List user name, select the applicable user's name and then click the OK button. That user's to do list will then appear. You can then use the filtering options outlined previously. You can also view the to do list as a separate dialog, thereby allowing you to view the to do list as well as work in the clinical program proper simultaneously. To access the floating to-do list, click the to-do menu and then view to-do list. When in the to-do list dialog, you can easily modify the to-do list you want to view by changing the owner. Likewise, all of the filtering and sorting features, along with the ability to create a new message, delete a to-do list item, or view a particular item, are performed in a similar manner as in the to-do list in the clinical application proper. Once a patient's chart has been opened, the toolbar above the patient list will become activated. The toolbar has a variety of buttons that allow you to perform certain functions with one click. Specifically, you can save notes, close a chart, print a chart, refresh the chart or list you are viewing, activate voice recognition if it is installed, access the organizer, transfer a chart note, sign a chart note, or annotate a chart note. When you open a patient's chart, the face sheet will appear on the left side of the screen, while the patient's most recent chart note will appear on the right. When a chart note is opened by a user, another user is not allowed to make changes to that chart note when the initial user has the original note checked out. Instead, the second user will be able to open a copy of that note that they can view but not make changes to. The face sheet provides an easily accessible summary list of problems and diagnoses, medications, allergies, miscellaneous notes, patient history notes, surgical history notes, patient annotations, recalls, as well as any test, lab, and image procedure orders for the patient. By clicking on the asterisk on the left side of the face sheet, you can get more information on that particular item. And for some sections, such as medications and procedure orders, you can modify and print information. The information in the face sheet is populated by creating a note and will be displayed every time you view the patient's chart. Whenever information populates a section of the face sheet, you have the ability to display or hide that information. To the right of each section heading, a plus or minus will appear. If you click the minus, the information for that section will be hidden. If you click the plus, the information for that section will be displayed. Whenever a patient chart is opened, the system will recall which sections are displayed and which are hidden in the face sheet based on the last user-defined setting.
By default, when you open a patient's chart, the most recently dated chart note will be displayed on the right side of the screen. The note tab is where you will spend the majority of your time. The heart of Chartmaker Clinical revolves around creating notes for a patient. From the note tab, you can create a new chart note, view the five recently saved or recently viewed chart notes, print the face sheet, create a new letter, view the organizer, or add an existing file to a chart. All of these options are available to you after you click on the note tab. When viewing chart notes, you have the ability to cycle through all of the chart notes for a patient by utilizing the arrow buttons in the upper right. To further refine your viewing, you can utilize the folders at the bottom of the screen to view specific types of chart notes. When in a specific folder, you can then utilize the arrow buttons again to cycle through the chart notes in that particular folder. You have the ability to configure up to six of the folders as desired. The all and unfiled folders are system folders that cannot be modified. The unfiled folder will contain any chart notes that have not been designated to a specific folder. You have the ability to assign a note to a folder by utilizing the dropdown in the top right of the chart header and selecting the specific folder the note should be filed to. The organizer is a feature that allows you to manage and view the chart notes for a patient. You can access the organizer by clicking the note tab and then organizer, or by clicking the organizer icon in the toolbar above the face sheet. The organizer is essentially a listing of the patient's chart records in a series of folders represented by the buttons on the bottom of the patient's chart. By selecting a particular button, you change folders and see only notes contained in that folder. You can also select the All folder to browse through all chart notes. You can file, refile, or unfile any or all notes into specific folders by utilizing the File To dropdown in the top right and then selecting the specific folder the note should be filed to. You have the ability to configure up to six of the folders as desired via the Manage Folders button. This, however, requires special privilege to access. The all and unfiled folders are system folders that cannot be modified. The unfiled folder will contain any chart notes that have not been designated to a specific folder. You also have the ability to designate various chart items for a formal health record. A formal health record column is in the organizer to show any applicable chart items that have been flagged as such. To flag a chart item for the formal health record, highlight the applicable item, then right click, and then select Mark as Formal Health Record. The buttons along the top of the organizer allow you to open the highlighted chart item. You can print a hard copy of the selected chart items, print a hard copy of all chart items, print the list of chart items as a hard copy or to file, delete selected chart items that have not been signed, and preview selected chart items. When the preview pane is activated, you can adjust the size of the preview. Click the preview button again to deactivate the preview pane. In addition, you have the ability to reassign and unassign scans that were misplaced in the patient's chart. Please note, however, that the reassign unassign functionality is only available when the create scans for notes preference is disabled. To reassign or unassign a scan, simply right-click the applicable scanned item and then click Reassign Scans or Unassign Scans, respectively. If reassigning, you are able to select the proper patient to whom the scan document belongs. Well, if you are unassigning a scan, it will then appear in the Unassigned Files folder. A user can then assign this scan to another patient by accessing the Unassigned Files in the Scan Management dialog. When in the patient's chart, the ID tab contains patient and address information, pharmacy information, specific case information such as principal care provider, any referring physicians, as well as insurance information. Likewise, you can also enter the patient's parents and configure various patient representatives for the patient. The information in the ID tab typically comes from the practice manager application. 
All of the pharmacy and patient representative information is configured in the clinical application only. Although you have the ability to enter and modify patient information in this area, the best practice is to enter the applicable information in Practice Manager, except for the pharmacy and patient representative information, which must be entered here. Once information is populated in the ID tab, the clinical program will then utilize this information when creating notes and performing other functions. The History tab contains information on all diagnostic, medication, vital sign modifications, as well as other historical data for the patient. This is the same information that is viewed on the face sheet, except it will show the entire history. If something was ended, for example a diagnosis, it would not show on the face sheet, but instead you will need to look in the History tab to see the details. You can filter what you are viewing by clicking on the icons in the History toolbar. You can view all events, just diagnostic events, just medication events, just test results, family history events, patient history events, or just surgical history events. Likewise, you can choose to sort the various history items by date or by provider. The History tab will show when the event occurred, as well as additional information. For diagnostic events and medications, it will show whether it was the onset, renewal, or ended on that date. For vital signs, it will display the value. To view more details on anything in the History tab, double-click the line and the note in which it was entered will open. A flow sheet is a tabular and graphical representation of stored procedures and or results that you can track. You can fully customize the flow sheet to your needs, and once set up, it will keep track of the same items for all patients. You also have the ability to create multiple types of flow sheets. An example would be an immunization flow sheet to track the various shots that a patient has received. Likewise, clinicians can utilize clinical flow sheets to assist with decision support and various guideline reminders, while providing an overall framework to provide a graphical representation of procedures and or results to be tracked. The flow sheet contains the procedure name, the required time interval at which the procedure is due, the time since it has been performed with a visual indicator as to whether the procedure was ever performed, whether it is due, and the date on which the procedure was completed. Likewise, you can utilize the filter buttons to sort the flow sheet information by year, month, or encounter. Information for the flow sheets are populated via chart notes, and also, when applicable, the system will automatically update information in patient flow sheets with data contained in imported lab reports. Flexforms are an alternative way of putting information into Chartmaker Clinical over time on an ongoing basis. Each record is saved, yet it allows you to continue to add additional information to the same flex form without having to create a new chart note for the patient. However, the information in the flex form is not stored in the database and therefore not searchable through data queries. Types of flex forms may be Cumidin sheets, where you put in the Cumidin dose and lab results, then keep adding this information as the patient returns. Others may be chemotherapy sheets to keep track of medications and times. There are three flex forms that you will receive by default, immunization, Cumidin record, and chemotherapy. Additional flex forms are optional custom forms and are created at STI Computer Services. Since any custom form has to be built by STI Computer Services, each requested flex form is first looked at to see if it is feasible to build, and then build to the customer based on the time it takes to create the form. If you are interested in flex forms, contact your Chartmaker Clinical Support Specialist or Trainer for more detailed information.